Hello, and welcome to our review of Eating Out 3, All You Can Eat, directed by Glenn Gaylord. I'm so excited to show you this movie. It was produced by Aristical Entertainment. Um, my name's David, and I'll be joined today by Robert and Drew, all the way from New York City. Yes, uh, hello, thank Hi. you for having me. That's it, let's start the movie. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I barely even have to give a disclaimer beforehand. There's like kind of foul-mouthed Thai nail techs, and uh, there's a lot of sexuality in this movie. But otherwise, the politics have finally like chilled out, which is great. So put on your sunglasses, new kid. We're driving to LA and we're diving dick, dick first, first into, into the, the gay, gay scene. scene. Whoop! Also, it's like already porn music, like right at the beginning, just to be clear. Yeah, like, yeah. That's oh, like, it's getting worse. Ristical. It's getting worse. Here's the candles. We open on a fantasy sequence again with Tiffany enjoying a sexy pastor. Look at that camera pan. Even yeah, the pan is on. porny. Thinking about Will that. Yeah. Side. Use me, treat me like a fuck oh. machine. Rare. Oh, Rebecca Kachan is my hero. Get it, rare. Girl. It turns out we're at a funeral for Kyle and Mark because they were killed off by Celine Dion's tour bus while Kyle was giving Mark Roadhead. Thank you. Thank you, scriptwriters. The only recurring actors are Rebecca Kachan and Mink Stoll. So I just want to take a moment and pay my respects to the actors who are no longer in the series. Where are they now? Kyle was played by Jim Vararos, who stopped acting in 2008, it looks like. So did you know that he has the distinction of being American Idol's first openly gay contestant in season one? He walked so Clay Aiken could prance. Clay Aiken can suck it. I, I mean, I'm sure he does, but that's besides the point. He, he doesn't need this. I don't need to make jokes about Clay Aiken after everything he's been through. There's no loss, we don't. It's American Idol's Clay Aiken. What the fuck? <laughs> Veraros currently works as a client success manager at an executive search firm. I sincerely hope it's a fulfilling career. Ryan Carnes, who originated the wonderful character of Mark, is having a fulfilling career as an actor. He was on General Hospital from 2004 to 2020, so he's killing it. The second actor who played Mark, Brett Chukerman, or Chuckerman, I apologize for any mispronunciation, he does infomercials for the Home Shopping Network. Marco Dapper, who played Troy, has continued acting. It turns out Eating Out 2 was his big break. I could probably use a cold shower. And what's up, princess? Just thinking out loud. <laughs> Scott Lunsford, who played Caleb in the first movie, he makes jewelry now. Isn't that so sweet? His website is called hardinglimited.com. <laughs> and finally, Emily Brookhands, who played Gwen. Someone needs to tell me what happened to Emily Brookhands. She's disappeared. She quit acting in 2008 or 2009. She's not anywhere on social media, and she wasn't written out of Eating Out 3. She literally just stopped existing. Wherever she is, I hope she's happy and I really hope I don't lose sleep over this. So anyway, let's talk about the gay movie. We meet Casey. Drew, that's you, just a couple Mark years I. ago. I'm, yeah, <laughs> literally, oh God. <laughs> <laughs> Can you see the lines on my face? Like, uh... Who's played by Daniel Skelton, and bless his heart, he may have been picked for his looks and not necessarily his acting ability. Lord, hear our prayer. I'm gonna love this town. But Helen, you don't wanna hear about that. Can you handle that? Is Madonna awesome? Okay. <laughs> Tiffany gives Casey a job at her nail salon called Nail Me, and then they try to think of ways for Casey to get involved in the local gay community. They decide to visit a local gay bar run by the icon, the legend, the star, Leslie Jordan. Oh, a virgin. Only if you don't count anal. <laughs> So Casey and Zach meet each other, and we also meet Zach's horrible boyfriend, Lionel, and Lionel's troop of silent, hot bitches. Can I say that? Can I say that with love? Can I say hot bitches with love, please? <laughs> so Zach is digmatized by Lionel, even though Zach is really trying to get out of this toxic relationship. See you soon, buddy. 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 Yeah. 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 Yeah, buddies, buddy is actually triggering. Mm -hmm. Lionel doesn't take it very well and then does what any confident hot bitch would do, goes outside and comes on Zach's front door. It might be funnier if he came on Zach's back door, but I will take what I can get. In an incredible display of screenwriting genius, we get two callbacks to come door in this movie. <laughs> Hi, 
Brian, right on time. Eventually, we get to the conceit of the farce. Casey gets online and tries to seduce Zach with a profile picture of one of Tiffany's ex-boyfriends, whose name is Ryan. What do I do? What do I write? Uh, write what you know. Well, in your case, don't. Uh, you're not helping. So Casey and Zach genuinely connect, even though the picture is fake. And unfortunately, Ryan is straight. I'm gonna go out on a limb and say that this farce plot is good. I think it could still work today. I know the acting and the dialogue are a little bit clunky, but it's fine. Next, Lionel is biking around town and he's a little annoyed because nobody wants his salty, stinky dick. He sees Zach and Casey in a park and assumes they're hitting it off because they're lounging, casually, in a human way. Zach later meets the real Ryan and at first Ryan is confused. Then Ryan sees Tiffany and realizes he could piss her off if he pretends to be gay. They try to go on a date, but Ryan has a conscience, so he gives up lying to Zach. The jig is up for the third time in a row. It never gets old. Now, given the options, do you think Zach A is pissed, B is pissed and horny, C doesn't care, or D gets run over by Cher's tour bus? And shove it right up your hair. <laughs> If you guessed B, you're correct. So Casey is losing hope and assumes he has no chance with Zach. Then he makes a little mistake and sleeps with Lionel. City of Angles? No. City of Devils. Dirty dick devils. But because Tiffany is rooting for Casey to get with Zach, she convinces Ryan to help her out and stage them getting back together. And they do so through the magic of briefs, booze, and by curiosity, the triple B of burgeoning sexuality. sexuality. We can't celebrate yet though, because Lionel wants to twist the knife with a video he took of Casey when they slept together. Oh no. You're just like everyone oh else. Oh my god. Fuck you. I actually forgot about the film until now. <laughs> yeah. No. Wait, didn't he just run out of his own home? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna come back in two hours. You better be out of my house. <laughs> running through the street in his underwear. So Lionel doesn't just have a dirty dick, he has a criminal cock. According to Penal Code Section 647, he has committed a misdemeanor and can face up to six months in jail and be fined up to $1,000. Though maybe that law didn't exist in 2009, meaning we need better penal codes. Libido laws, if you will, ass affidavits, booty bailiffs, cum convictions, dishonorable discharges. I will not apologize for these jokes. One of the last scenes takes place at a fundraiser, but Lionel and his hot bitches have pulled out. Stop! No more innuendo! So the only models we have left for the fundraiser are Ryan and Casey. Ryan doesn't really get the crowd going, and then Casey doesn't really have the confidence, but he pulls up his courage Ew. <laughs> I don't know why I said ew. It was almost like I pictured courage being a pair of diapers. So Casey just pulls on a pair of diapers and then is like, okay, I'm ready for my big speech. Casey makes a lovely speech about how ageism is dumb, which is nice because that's a major problem that some gay men have to deal with. So Zach is smitten by Casey's vulnerability and then they smooch and then they smash. The end. Here's what Robert Drew and I thought after we finished watching. First and foremost, this was far better than the other two. Yeah, I know, I would agree. I mean, I think I really, I do have a special place in my heart for all of the eating out movies. Like I don't, because they used to be on Netflix and I remember like, and like way back when, and I remember they were like kind of the first movies that I was like secretly watching as like, a little gay, like just, you know what I mean? Like truly, like, well, that's also why yeah. I was like, oh my God, I love these movies. But you know how you can like see what you watch on Netflix? Mm -hmm. And my sister was like, what are these movies called eating out? And I was like, I, I just like, I don't know. Like what, like, what could those be? And then she like did some digging and she was like, it's like gay porn. And I was like, dad is into some weird stuff. Hey, like, I'm not sure. <laughs> oh no, it was blamed on dad. <laughs> well, I was like, I mean, yeah, well, it was just like, you know, when someone's like caught you in a lie and you're just like, well, I'm not going to cop to it. Like, I don't give a fuck. Like you can believe whatever you want. So yes, in conclusion, that was very long winded. Thank you for listening to that story. It's such like a subjective thing of like whether a movie's funny or not, but this one just, it just hits different. It's so good. Yeah. I really, I, I will say, I will go on the record. I love this movie. Yeah. Oh uh, <laughs> and I think we're all in agreement that Tiffany, like, she really, she comes of age in this film. The growth from her just being this like disposable 
character with like a really problematic fetish and then like having more agency and now she's just like the funniest drag queen I have ever seen <laughs> you know <laughs> somebody said that in the film <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, actually totally true she like she was just a bit character who became kind of like a supporting character and now is a lead like she was the first yeah. credit right and yeah. she deserves it because she was so much like it's almost like they had a diamond in the rough that they were like mm, we've ignored her for two films and then they turned her in full flesh character and she completely deserved it and totally pulled it off now okay i have a very tough question for the zoom what is a palon if you think going on a fake gay date will make me jealous you're dumber than a flock of palins oh no 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 she said like a group of like a flock of palins because she was saying like, what is that? Because I, I believe at the time that the film was being made, Palin was in office and she was such an idiot. So she's oh. referring to the fact that you're as dumb as a flock of Palins. Oh. I wait. That's what I got. Say that. Say that even slower. I still don't understand. So what is a Sarah what is Palin, a Palin office? who was oh. Sarah Palin, right? Oh. A Palin office? No, David. It's not a specific <laughs> detachment of government. government. I was like, ah, yes, Microsoft, Apple, Palin. <laughs> I'm so dumb. Do you guys think Sarah Palin has seen this series? Hell yeah. no. No, <laughs> no way in hell has she 100%. witnessed this. Yeah. She was she was an executive producer on this. That's how she got the That's line it. in about her. Drew and I discovered that David has never had anger sex. Oh no. yeah, no hate sex. No, David. no hate sex. No hate sex for me. I'm well, too pure. <laughs> but have you ever? But have, have you ever had sex with like an ex boyfriend who made like as like? Have you ever had? No, never. No, you're clean break. Okay, well, good on you. But life good is long. Him. Life is very long. Life is long. Yeah, yeah. You got <laughs> many years ahead of you for hate sex. Like everybody is kind of sexually fluid, and that's it was kind of ahead of its time, honestly. Yeah. For when it was made, which like, I mean, do they portray it like beautiful? Beautifully and like you know with a lot of nuance like probably not but it's like it's like everybody's yeah. just horny and I think that is a good message like yes it doesn't matter like what you're into yeah. everyone's horny it's wonderful I mean when was this movie made like 90s or early 2000s no this, no. <laughs> this was made in 08 <laughs> 09 is yeah. in, in the aughts <laughs> it was made in the aughts oh yeah Oh, right. Okay. Wow. I was like, when was this movie made? Like 93? Okay. Well, I mean, I'm giving it less credit for the sexual fluidity thing. Cause like, well, okay, whatever. But, um, I also did write down faggotry studies because I weirdly would, I weirdly would take that class, especially if Tiffany was teaching it. Especially if yeah, it was it, called that, I'd just be intrigued. Like talk about good marketing. Talking about growth as the series goes on is like, I think they only used fag in a loving way in this movie. And that's sure. so nice. Yeah. Oh. You know? Mm -hmm. I don't think yeah. anyone used it as an insult. There were no straight people using it. There was no like homophobic people using it. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I did not expect that. I have said all I need to say. Would we recommend Eating Out 3? I would. Two thumbs way up for Eating Out 3. Yeah. And for many different reasons. Go for a laugh stay to get intimate with yourself like truly do whatever you need to do when watching <laughs> eating out for you yeah it was That's far true. more positive uh sex positive uh kind of queer content positive and yeah it was just funnier i enjoyed it so much more and i think it was genuine like we were i was looking for a yes or no robert <laughs> no you're gonna hear everything i just thought like all the reactions from us were just like we were like i was looking at david i was just like i think this is actually good like we were like i can't believe this mm. so there's your fucking thumbs up <laughs> yeah. love it drew do you have anything to plug if any of the bit button slash podcast followers want to watch sugar baby web series amazing that would be so dreamy and also a music video f uh, from house party will be released soon so if anybody wants yes. to check that out that would be amazing yes thanks yeah. for coming on drew. yeah thank you guys thank so you, much drew. for having me it's so lovely meeting you guys this is so lovely like big fan can't wait for the review for eating out four <laughs> i'm honored to be like, I'm honored to be on the Eating Out 3 review for real. Hell yeah. Thanks for checking out this review. Robert and I have a podcast called Tissues of the Day where we talk about queer culture and relationships. It's really fun, very thoughtful, I, I hope. We also have a Patreon if you want to support videos like this. Patreon.com slash bitbutton. Otherwise, feel free to just comment, leave a like on the video, or share it with a friend. That really, really helps us out because we're a smaller channel. Thanks so much. See ya. Bye. Bye. <laughs>